in the in Indonesia, we say that we are the oldest research institution. So, also we were established legally in 1967, but our history, I'd say that we started since the, in, at the Dutch time when the Bogor Botanical Garden was established in 1870. And we are the largest research institution in terms of uh, human resources and facilities. And also we are a leading patent contributor in Indonesia now. Next. So we consist of 26 research centers and 16 technical implementation units, four administrative bureaus, two international centers, and four botanical gardens. <laughs> okay. Okay, everyone. One, One two, three. To oppose the government, we actually do school schools in, uh, in Nigeria. So to avoid uh, the, the uh, infectious Nigerian nationalism, <laughs> they decided to establish uh, an English-speaking university in southwest Cameroon. And that restricted the okay, influx okay. of Cameroonians in Nigeria. My name is Jean-Jacques Ngorsen. I'm a citizen of Senegal in West Africa. Uh, I've been living in the United States for a number of years now, teaching African history uh, and political philosophy. Um, at a private university in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, next to those responsibilities, I also happen to run an internationalization program called Global Focus. So professionally, politically, personally, my connection with the Bandung spirit was natural. But uh, more precisely, what brought me to the Bandung network is really the notion of Pan-Africanism. During the Bandung era, after 1955, really Africa missed the opportunity of considering unity as the only way out of neo-colonialism. Five years ago, in 2010, I joined the network uh, to celebrate the 55th anniversary, and I'm here this year again as the coordinator of the Spirituality and Religion Working Group Nobody will deny that spirituality and religion have become really a source of great turbulence in the so-called third world, and as such, we have a lot to contribute in the discussions as to how we are going to manage identity and diversity because religion usually touches into those deep issues. Bonjour, je suis Lazare Kizerbo. Je viens du Burkina Faso pour participer à cette conférence sur le 60e anniversaire de Bandung parce que je travaille beaucoup sur le panafricanisme. Je suis philosophe de formation. Et je suis aussi vice-président du comité international Joseph Kizerbo pour l'Afrique et la diaspora et qui est basé en France et au Burkina Faso, enfin sur le continent africain. Et donc cette cause du de Bandung, du non-alignement et de la souveraineté des pays et des peuples du Sud est un thème important pour notre organisation et aussi dans mes recherches. Donc voilà les raisons pour lesquelles j'ai décidé de participer à cette conférence. Je suis chargé donc de la déclaration finale. Donc je vais travailler en collaboration avec les coordinateurs des différents groupes. Elle sera adoptée en plénière, je crois, vendredi, et nous allons la remettre formellement et officiellement à la représentante du président de l'Indonésie lors de la clôture. It is our duty also to strengthen the effort, the effort of people-to-people interaction to develop a network of communities such as business, the private sector, youth, 
media and, acad and academia as well as to enhance the capacity to manage and implement the development efforts. My name is Mustari Rawan, Director General of National Archive of Republic Indonesia. Uh, there are three reasons, main, main reasons, why I decided to propose uh, AAC uh, archive to, to get a nomination of a memory of the world from uh, UNESCO. Based on the contents of AAC archive, you know uh, AAC, Asia Africa Conference, is the monumental events in our country, not only in our country, but in international uh, world and this is a unique event because after 1955 there is no uh, conference of uh, Asia Africa this is the only one at the time 1940 1955 so this is the uh, based on the reasons uh, AAC uh, has the 10 principle and the result of uh, declaration give uh, impact to the international world. This is the second. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's honor, it's honor for Ami to present, uh, to give presentation about the significance of the Bandung Asian African Conference of Archive. Uh, as a memory of the world. Uh, this photograph showing about five sponsored countries and five, uh, maybe six people, is very famous in the ASEAN African country. So, we start with the Sukarno speech in the open nature And this is this piece is very interesting, very interesting. And I beg of you, do not think of colonialism only in the classic form, which we of Indonesia, and or rather in different parts of Asia and Africa. No. Colonialism has also its modern dress in the form of economic control, intellectual control, actual physical control, like a small but alien community within a nation. It is a skillful and determined enemy and it appeared in the the, the Sri Lankan or Ceylonese newspaper called Ceylon Daily News said that it's, um, it's the optimal, uh, optimal state of female representation at the conference which is really sort of undermining uh, part of what the part of the intention of the conference because why wasn't there a single woman delegate represented um, in the 29 delegations which, uh, which were representing 1.4 billion people uh, um, of the world. My name is Naoko Shimazu. I'm from Birkbeck, University of London, and I'm a professor of history there. And I teach East Asian history and also global history, um, which concerns modern Asia. And I'm here uh, at this conference in the history section and I've just um, gave, given a paper on women performing diplomacy at the Bandung Conference of 1955. And basically this paper is part of a, a big research book, monograph I'm writing, which is called Diplomacy as Theatre, the Bandung Conference of 1955 and the Making of the Third World. But I talk about the fact that if one looks at official documentations uh, of the 1955 Bandung Conference, you really don't see many women at all. So it's about the invisibility of women and what I call the non-performance as performance. However, I make a point that if one has a much broader conception of diplomacy as something which is situated in the everyday life of the people, then of course you have to expand the scope of um, you know, intellectual inquiry by including other non-traditional diplomatic sources, including lots of visual materials. And once you start looking at photographic representations of the conference, one is very struck by the fact that there are so many women in these photographs. 
So women actually do play a role as informal agents of diplomacy. Um, and obviously when we try to expand the definition of what diplomacy is, and by, extend, by extending it to situate it in the everyday life, then inevitably you have to actually consider women, and women do begin to appear in, um, in diplomatic contexts. Well, I, I, I was very interested in coming to this conference. I'm, I'm on the board of the scientific board, board member, and I find, what attracted me about this conference was the fact that it wasn't the usual academic conference on, on the Bandung conference, which there have been quite a few in the 60th anniversary year. Um, but because this conference is also about activists and people who actually come here with you know, particular social, um, political, cultural questions and issues which concern our societies today. So, and also this is a very unusual gathering because it gathers people from all over the world. The kind of people that I would never be able to meet normally are here. So that's why I really wanted to come and be part of it. My name is Darwis Kudori, I'm from Indonesia and I am based in France. I am architect and historian and I am the international coordinator of this Bandung Asian African Conference commemoration uh, 60th anniversary. And I take care of the seminar on history because uh, as you know that we have seven uh, group working groups culture ecology economy politics religion gender and history so i'm responsible for the seminar on history because uh, since 2005 we have organized every five years the commemoration of bandung conference because bandung conference is very important in world history uh, that uh, what is called bandung spirit is still very relevant today to uh, settle the global problems, the challenge of global global problems. Because, uh, as you know, that uh, 60 years after Bandung Conference, that even that colonialism uh, doesn't exist anymore, but you have still the, the domination, military domination, economic domination, poverty, diseases, and still the, the, the gap between the rich countries and poor countries, developed countries, developing countries, and uh, also domination by the few countries in the world which takes 80% of natural resources of the world for their own comfort, their own security, their own pleasure. So this is very important that we organize Bandung Conference uh, as a way to solve this uh, global problem. Join uh, research or join project on countries in two continents. Fatima Hara. I am from Morocco, from the University of Muhammad V in Rabat. I am a historian. I am uh, at this conference as a representative of the Council for the Development of Social Science in Africa, CODESRIA. Uh, which is a partner organization of this conference. And I'm also going to give a, a keynote speech in Bandung tomorrow on the uh, governance, world governance and the spirit of Bandung. What is the effect or the impact of Bandung? Immediate impact. Immediate political impact. First, the admission of African and Asian countries in the UN. In 19, December 1955, Cambodia, Salem, Jordan, Laos, Libya, and Assembly. And then in the following year, Japan, Morocco, Sudan, Tunisia, Assembly. And then in 1957, uh, uh, Ghana and Malaysia got their independence. So, during 10 years, from 1955, until 1965, 31 countries of Africa got their independence. I'm uh, Seema Mehra Parihar, Associate Professor of Geography from Kirori Mal College of University of Delhi. And I'm here a working group coordinator of gender, which is being introduced for the first time 
and that's keeping me really spirited that all these years in last 60 years we did not have gender per se being recognized as a concern where who together can take the world forward today we find that gender is uh, gender is not only women gender is inclusive of acceptability of other identities also this is the theme behind the, the scene to prepare our uh, program since more than one year now uh, if you want to say maybe everybody one minute it's, uh, it's uh, your, your, your time now so Uh, my name is Adam Spodomo. I come from Ghana. I'm a professor of uh, African Studies at the University of Vienna and I chair the Culture Committee. Uh, I came here because you know I, I wanted to support this conference you know that uh, Professor Kudori has been organizing. This is the second time I've come back to Indonesia. Okay, and uh, Professor Kudori has done a great job in organizing a series of Bandung commemorative conferences. And I like this conference, this idea, because there are many aspects of Africa, Asia, but this particular set of conferences are initiated by Africans and Asians, and I want to support this initiative. So I am in Bandung, uh, in uh, Jakarta here, and I'm going to Bandung tomorrow, and in all these, I'll present a paper where I will talk about the uh, need for Africans and Asians to understand each other's cultures very well. I want to see uh, Bahasa Indonesians sp spoken and studied all around Africa, and I want to see African language also studied in Indonesia here and throughout uh, Asia. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is our Jakarta custom. We like to say this is like a place to put on on you. Is Assalamualaikum is Arabic is the characteristic of the Betawi at least in Jakarta. So I hope tonight we will come to our city hall and we could enjoy our dinner. Um, my name is Salman Al Farisi. Um, I'm now the acting of uh, Director General for uh, Policy Analysis and uh, Development Agency of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, the meeting among scholars uh, uh, of the um, uh, ASEAN African countries uh, is conducted uh, as the follow up of uh, the uh, 60th uh, commemorative uh, conference of uh, Asia Africa conference uh, held in Bandung uh, six years ago, uh, six months ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, one of uh, the agreement made by the leaders at the time is to have a network of scholars to help um, the government and. Uh, other stakeholders in uh, making uh, policies uh, and decision on how uh, to make uh, the ASEAN African countries uh, become uh, uh, better uh, countries, uh, both in economic, social, politics, and, and, and etc. Yeah. My name is Thomas Sirega. I am the director of Museum of Asian African Conference, which is located in Bandung, Indonesia. Uh, in this building, we call it Merdeka 
building. It is the place where the countries from 29 countries, including Indonesia, held the Asian African Conference in 1955. And today we witness once again uh, a seminar, an international seminar, which is held in this building also to celebrate the 60 years of Asian African Conference. I'm very ha I'm very glad to see this because it's uh, it shows that the spirit of Asian African solidarity is still exists until now. Pandu spirit, spirit of solidarity among Asian African nations are still exist. We can see that scholars from all over the world come here to Bandung, they discuss, they analyze, and they explore the significance of Bandung spirit on the world today. giving us leads in many experiments, both in politics and thought, in discourses. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Therefore, that would be my first suggestion for all of us. Uh, uh, always talk in terms of all the three, Asia, Africa and Latin America. And I'm so happy that uh, at least a few friends and some very important uh, activists and writers are here from Latin America. May this be so. Uh, the other suggestion, which is becoming very clear, that uh, we have an intellectual agenda to pursue, where, uh, if not failure, at least uh, you know the it, uh, the large obstacles in changing the terms of discourse have become very clear. We have tried for 60 years to make Bandung discourse to redefine political discourse, development discourse, liberation discourse, and transformation discourse, discourse in history. And we have not succeeded. Let us admit that. And the dominant discourse is still a colonial, neocolonial, and hegemonic discourse. The post-independence period, and, and this is what our anti-colonial struggles were all about. They wanted to assert the right to redefine the terms of discourse, to say that liberation is about liberating from political domination, economic domination, knowledge domination. And I think that intellectual agenda is to be highlighted in this conference. And women, let us resist against war in the presence of foreign military base in our countries. Use of Indonesia, please join me. Give me a dozen students. We transform the world, have said Sukarno, probably you remember. Today is a special day. It's a day for these students. They are joining us here in this place. They were not witnessing the Bandung Conference, but they are very important. They are the future. Okay, so hello, I'm Aziz Salmon Fall. I'm a political scientist, Pan Africanist. Belong to the Group for Research and Initiative for the Liberation of Africa, and I'm in charge of the politics seminar. Well, I'm delighted to be here. We're going to discuss uh, major political issues. My main interest is to make sure that uh, people understand that the Bandung spirit is still alive, but it has to transform to adapt to the 21st century. I advocate for what I call trans-internationalism, which is basically the rediscovery of the values of the Bandung era, but to adapt it to the new condition of globalization, resistance, um, revisiting three continental um, strategies, and this is basically to call for the use to repoliticize and uh, to 
bring uh, along a front of convergence of in the diversity towards uh, new internationalism. And this is basically to try to revive the spirit, as I said, of the three continental. Because I think it's not just an Asian-African front that we have to build. We have to build a three continental front within the uh, global south. And to no longer be non-aligned, I think we have to be aligned on the internationalist uh, values. And this is, I think, a different philosophy. It's no longer the neutral philosophy because we are no longer in a bipolarized world. We are in a polycentric world to be instead of a unipolar world. And in order to be that, we have to find and choose our side. And this is not neutral position. So I think the new generation has to rediscover because we no longer can sustain the development as it is today. And um, maybe m most of us are kind of has been, but I belong to the generation that believe that we can change this world. And this is why I'm here and I'm hoping to have a little input in the conference in a such important uh, place like Bandung. My name is Yukio Kamino and uh, I'm an I'm a NGO staff, NGO researcher uh, stationed in Tokyo. Uh, NGO's na name is Oiska International and that is the headquarter in, in Tokyo. I am the coordinator of uh, ecology seminar. I, I did write uh, terms of let's see TOR terms of reference. Um, I um, of course about uh, environmental things but I did uh, uh, underline the uh, interdisciplinary and, and the transdisciplinary uh, aspects and uh, also I underscored that uh, ecology is the foundation in which human system exists as a dependent part. Said, I have this famous quote, can this Walton speak? So the question is not whether they can speak or whether they can articulate themselves. The question is whether we can hear, the others can hear. Can we hear and listen to the uh, plight of the victims of Fukushima, the victims of the indigenous communities? So uh, it is also a, a, a question of whether we ourselves can change in a lot of our uh, horizons and our perspectives. And lastly, about the question of uh, the growth, there need to be the growth, there need to be the urbanization, there need to be a reversal in the, in the channeling of all resources, uh, so-called resources and people and all um, uh, to the north and to the centers. And I think this, uh, this agenda of um, talking about the growth and the linking and uh, in favor of the interdependence of um, uh, communities and their relationship to nature, I think this is very inadequate uh, in our uh, pursuit for and, and in our debates about alternatives. And I hope uh, we can further pursue this. Thank you. Thank you. that the one who is talking about gender empowerment are the ones also to be talking about in the world that you use, which is again something that we, I think so we need uh, two hours to discuss on that, that is gender autocracy. Gender empowerment at no time means gender autocracy. 
Empowerment means acceptance of everything. And I am against it. I am saying give us equality. Women's agency will find ways for that empowerment. We are not talking about that. And as a writer, just, just happen. My name is Hamak Sagrim, together with uh, Dishon Gambu. Um, uh, my title is uh, I'm an architecture from West Papua province, and uh, together with my organization, I mean joining the uh, Bandung movement for uh, uh, will be presented. My paper is uh, about uh, dualism, nationalism in, in the West Papua, about uh, West Papua nationalism and the uh, Indonesian nationalism crossing in the Papua. And then other uh, and at, uh, time, I will be read a statement from my government in the West Papua about uh, emission marketing, because uh, in the Papua is a bigger forest environment, of, and uh, uh, will be set up in the world. Uh, our country is an industrial country. It's a big high. Uh, indigenous peoples have uh, uh, and fire in the Papua because that's a product for uh, oxygen for uh, the world. So that's uh, my trip to Bandung and the Jakarta and uh, I'm closing remark in the Jakarta to Sakti for uh, presenting my paper. gathering at this venue. In fact, when the Bandung conference took place in 1955, my parents were newlyweds in Palestine. <laughs> and you would never imagine growing as a child in Palestine, reading about international historical events, how these events would form your life and I hear, I quite admit, that I was mainly politically raised by Palestinian communist figures back in Palestine, hearing about international events uh, that actually had to do with the Third World and liberation movements as well as Palestine.
my speech, I would like to say very important to thank to my colleagues, Dr. Ida Busnetti. So let's just say it together, right? We all are for women unity. We all are for women unity. We all are for gender unity. We all are for gender unity. We all are for gender equality. We all are for gender equality. So now let's all just like this. May I request Ma'am Professor Mohanty to please come here and take the first slide and then all of us just do that, make a chain and then come and put it here. As I said earlier, one is representing what? Women. women. First is women. Second is men. men. And the third is transgender. We all are... Again, try to establish a long drawn process of Arabization. Yes, in Nigeria. Uh, about uh, the walls in body controlling because I put it, there are two, two views from egalitarian perspective and utilitarian that's um, for human rights to go everywhere and for equality and opportunity. Migration would contribute to a reduction of... Of the population of the South is not the objective. They are only used as shells, cover, as objects not a subject. And Tunis is so complex that even for a Palestinian himself or herself, we can hardly follow up all the, these uh, complicated details. So that's why we need a research network that will be every day working in order to be able to follow up. Of um, um, Burma, which is next to um, essentially, uh, Thailand, and then beyond that is Malaysia. The Rohingyas are the only Muslim community that has a uh, geographic concentration in a particular uh, area. And it's really my pleasure to be here this morning with all of you to this important conference of commemoration of the 60th anniversary of 1955 Bandung ASEAN African Conference in Jakarta. I hope that you have already traveling in Indonesia and enjoy your stay here and has the experience to take a look how Indonesia has changed since maybe five years ago or ten years ago. It has been the five years ago we equal. Yeah it took a yeah it took a then how long has been Going on this. Yeah, since we commemorate since 2005, and then okay. in Mada first 2005 and 2010 back to Gajamada and now in Jakarta. Only. Okay, it has and been. Bandung. Okay, it has been the third yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that you see some differences, some progress, development in Indonesia, and yes, Indonesia is an open economy. And we cooperate with a lot of countries in the world, even in Asia, we are the biggest in Asia in terms of population and also economic, yeah, and also in impact of WTO and we, 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 we open up our nation. Social internationalism, economic internationalism, but for the benefit of the peoples of the Global South. And actually we have chosen to add, to include Latin America to all our future activities. So we, think, we talk about ASAFLA, which is Asia, Africa, and don't forget Latin America, where very important initiatives challenging the hegemony and the empire have been uh, 
witness since uh, a few years. I don't want to quote about uh, the mansion, Chavez, Ecuador, etc. Our determination to contribute practically to the revival of the Bantan spirit through the implementation of the Declaration on Reinvigorating the New Asian African Strategic Partnership adopted in April 2015 in Bandung by the leaders of Asian African countries with the aim of building an alternative intellectual agenda providing tools for progressive political initiatives based on the still relevant spirit of Bandung. Darwish can come to the front stand. Now we can take photo after. So I think we, 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 we can come to take photo together. Yang kami bawa kini berkembang ratu namanya asalnya.